Well, hello. It's the 10th of August, 1862. I have a numerical superiority at the present. However, in the next three months, 100,000 men are going to... Their enlistments are going to expire, and I'll lose 100,000 men. Because of the way it works, the Confederates can move guys around so even though they're outnumbered, at any particular point, they can always outnumber me. I just had a battle in Washington where there were 160,000 Confederates attacking 80,000 Yankees. It was a hard battle. We managed to hold on. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them piled up in Virginia. I'm about... To start moving in Missouri, even though that's not, nothing out here is that important. I want to get Kentucky and West Virginia. Because they have everybody piled up here, I'm going to see if I can't draw some of them off. West Virginia, I need Wheeling, Grafton, and Charleston. Kentucky, I need Lexington, Bowling Green, and or Bowling Green, and Bowling Green, and. Lexington and Bowling Green. So I gotta fight a battle. Twenty nine thousand revs versus twenty seven thousand Yankees. We'll take the objectives, then they'll have to attack me. I don't I don't think any of my armies are commanded by names that you would know. I don't fire the guys I start with unless they screw up or get killed. <laughs>
Most of the names that you would recognize are brigade commanders, or possibly division commanders. A few corps commanders. When they get experience as a brigade commander, I promoted the division. When they get experience as a division commander, I promoted the corps. And if they get experience as a corps commander, then they can get an army. But most of the guys who have started as army commanders are still army commanders. <laughs> because we don't lose battles. And I'm not going to fire a guy just because somebody more famous in history is there. If he hasn't if he hasn't screwed up, I'm not, why, why would you fire a guy who's winning? Bitter Creek. Remember the movie on the TV show Branded? All but one man died there at Bitter Creek. They say he ran away. It was Chuck Connors. They tore off his buttons and broke his sword. Denver. Well, they're not going to be able to get across, so you, you go up to there. Richardson. You go to there. We'll keep Andrews in reserve. Houghton, put your guns on this hill. <coughs> I say couch, but I think it's actually cooch. This fight shouldn't last too long. I don't think these revs are too happy. Yeah, see... When they're flashing like that, it means they're not happy. So it shouldn't take too much to say, you know, go away. Where's your general at? There he is. Yep. Well, you don't... I think you need to go that far forward.
in the courier riding over there to get uh, give orders to this brigade. Now it will move. Because I'm from Ohio, the only troops I give weird special uniforms to are guys from Ohio. They get green uniforms. Everybody else is the blue. <laughs> This corps has two brigades of three brigades of Ohio troops. Four, five, six brigades of Ohio troops. It's it's an Ohio division. <laughs> I give troops from Wisconsin uh, special uniforms too because of the Iron Brigade. They get the ones with the with the with the uh, what were they called? It was a black felt hat, which is why they were called the Black Hat Brigade for the three Wisconsin regiments who went in from Indiana. Later, a Michigan unit was added. A Hardy hat, named after a general named Hardy who designed it. It was the dress hat for the Union Army before the war. When John Gibbon took over command of the brigade, they were all volunteers and all that, so to make them feel special, he gave them party hats. So they were called the Black Hat Brigade. They later turned into the Iron Brigade. Well, come on, you Reds, if you want to attack, attack. have to keep some troops in reserve you see they start with 60 rounds of ammo but they can go through that really quick and when you run out of bullets they're not quite as good as they were <laughs> so you have to have fresh units to replace them I don't think they're serious about this attack because <laughs> they're not coming very hard. Oh, John C. Fremont. Ah, uh, he's doing okay as a brigade commander. He, he was a division commander who killed that Antietam. When he died, the Yankees were on the verge of breaking the Army of Northern Virginia. 
But when he got killed, that that ended the all the initiative. He was collecting the stuff needed for another attack when he got killed. At the sunken road. Or bloody lane as it's known. I put my artillery up front too. You know, they're, they're, they're very well forward. <laughs> Where are you going? I didn't tell you to go anywhere. Stop, stop. Get back over where you belong. They're just wearing themselves out for nothing. They're not pressing me very hard. <laughs> you see, he has one star, and the brigade has one star. But they are trained. <laughs> it's late 1862. Where are you going? Come back! What? It's late 1862. Except for these 100,000 guys that are getting out of the army in two months. Everybody else is a 36 month guy. So I have... I can, I can count on them for the rest of the war. <laughs> it takes two years to get the troops that you can train and equip to use the rest of the war. Now see, two stars means they can, they can, they, they know what they're doing a little bit. So you have to get them. You have to get them in fights and train. Okay, this guy's running out of bullets, so I'll send a brigade up there to help him.
the Corps Commander up there where he can influence the battle. McDowell doesn't come down to us very well. <laughs> he was the poor guy who was forced into fighting the first battle at Bull Run. Even though everybody knew the troops weren't trained and And he wore a funny hat that everybody made fun of. Alright, enough of this nonsense. Oh no, Warren's been wounded. Stovall's taking a pounding and keeping it up. bloodier than I thought it was going to be. Do what I tell you! Get him! <laughs> well, that brigade's done.
Yeah. Yeah, put up a good fight. Oh wait. They're supposed to be attacking me. Yuck. I lost 30 guns. We'll get them all back. They're, 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 they haven't been captured. The gun crews all ran away. They go through ammo really quick. <laughs> I wish I could tell them to carry more than 60 rounds. We're about out. There we go. They're running away now. This was just one core out of the, the Army of the Ohio, which has three or four cores now. They're moving to take over Kentucky. There's another army up in Cincinnati that just got formed under General McClellan, which is going to attack Kentucky from that direction. Patton Sr. Yep. Patton's daddy or granddaddy was a confederate.
Right, that battle was fought because they just took my fort at Evansville, Indiana, which is guarding the river. So I sent a, I sent a corps from this army over here to take it back. And now we'll. Don't I have some river boats I can send down there? The headquarters down here. See, then this, this there's this other army up here in Cincinnati. Twenty-seven thousand. Johnson's army still got ninety thousand guys. We, we got them outnumbered. All right. Now this mess over here. I want to take Harper's Ferry, so then like this, these two cores we can form an army and and fight in the valley, while the Army of the Potomac moves to, to down here. I want to finally get all the Confederates out of my territory and start invading theirs. Oh yeah, I gotta replace a wounded officer. That was the seventh corps. first guy that shows up gets the job and major somebody got in trouble although I don't know I don't have any majors in charge or anything. I don't know who the major who got in trouble was. Oh, wait. It's over here. Did you, are you the one that got in trouble? Yep, he's the one that got in trouble. Okay. They eventually get their reputations back. And he got in trouble because I put him too far forward, you know. So. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, that's what it looks like. The next big battle should be at Harper's Ferry, and then we can pull the army down and what's the next town? Oh, Manassas, of course. Bull Run. Once we take Harper's Ferry, AOP will come down to Manassas and we'll see if we can get the fight there. Well, that's what we got here.